So, welcome to another OmniFocus Fitness video. Today we're going to be discussing dietary reference intakes. So we're going to be talking about different markers that we use to determine the exact reference for our dietary intake. So if that comes to micronutrients, macronutrients, anything that is related to nutrition, we have specific baselines that we've determined. Of course, this depends on government to government, but I'm going to be talking about the U.S. dietary intakes that we've determined here. And I'm going to discuss each one of those different dietary intakes, how we go about figuring out those dietary intakes, among other things. So if that's interesting to you, then you've come to the right place, and we shall get started. Let's go! Okay, so let's go ahead and get started right off the bat. Uh, when we're talking about dietary intakes or different references, we're talking about four main references. And the first one is a baseline, which is the EAR. The EAR is the estimated average requirement, and that is actually based off of kind of an average. So they figure out what would cover 50% of the population. So if you could, if you were to base your dietary intake on that EAR, you would have a, it would be 50-50. So it's possible that you're uh, not consuming enough or it is possible that you are consuming enough. But obviously that's not gonna cut it for an entire population. That means that you're cutting out 50% of the population. You're not covering 50% of the population to achieve a dietary number on a daily basis that would allow them to be in a healthy state. So their body has to be in a healthy state. That's what these reference numbers are for and that's why they're established by the government. And the EAR is just a baseline so it gives us that 50% mark and then from there we can move on to the next dietary mark. And that next dietary reference is probably the most popular one, the one that most people should be focusing on, and that's the recommended daily allowance. It's also interchangeably called the recommended daily intake, RDI, RDA, either one. People will probably know what you're talking about. And that one is actually based on the EAR, so the estimated average requirement we first figure out our estimated average requirement, then what we do is move over, statistically, we move over two standard deviations over, and that would actually cover, end up covering about 98% of a particular population. So that 98% is a much, much better percentage than the EAR, which only covers that 50%. So most likely you have a 98% chance of being covered under that RDA, so the recommended daily allowance. And that's what most recommendations are based off of. Of course, you still have that kind of roughly 2% chance of not falling under that, but the chances are pretty low that you're in that 2%. And if you are, I mean, you can of course always just kind of increase or decrease based on whatever your body needs, but most people are completely fine with using that RDA number. The next one is uh, acceptable intake. And the acceptable intake is actually around because we can't necessarily figure out exactly an RDA for every single micronutrient, every single macronutrient. Macronutrients probably not that much of an issue, but as far as micronutrients, there are a lot of them. Minerals and vitamins, there are a lot of them. And we haven't necessarily found all we haven't exactly looked at every single one in as much detail as each other. Um, there are different interactions that certain minerals and vitamins have on each other, so things get a little more muddled. It's a little more complicated than 
just coming out with a number. You can't just necessarily test with a controlled trial on uh, a lot of these minerals and vitamins. So they come out with an acceptable intake, which is basically a best guess. It's a it's a it's an educated guess, and that educated guess comes from observation, mostly observational research, uh, some uh, experimental research, but usually we use an acceptable intake if we're not necessarily, if we don't necessarily have a massive amount of information about a particular mineral or nutrient or vitamin, and then we end up using just observational data. So we'll maybe look back and look at what other people consumed and we'll see, okay, well, they fared well. They, they, they led a healthy life because they, contain, they, they consumed a certain amount of uh, a nutrient. And that being the case, if we are able to then extrapolate off that and maybe add a little bit or take away a little bit, um, based on kind of expert opinion, then we're able to figure out an acceptable intake. Uh, that being said, of course, an acceptable intake is not going to be as concrete. It's not going to be as accurate as a recommended daily allowance, but it is the best guess that we can possibly take. That does not mean that an acceptable intake is necessarily a bad thing. We've been using these acceptable intakes for a long time. And if there is eventually new research, because we are constantly researching, if there is more research that comes out, then the acceptable intake changes. But I can almost guarantee that the current acceptable intakes are probably pretty close to what they'll end up being for a consistent basis. And of course, these change based on uh, our population, what it goes through, um, depends on all kinds of different situations, which I'll actually go into a little bit later. So let's move on to the final recommendation, the final reference point. And the final reference point that I wanted to mention in this video is the upper limit, so the UL. The upper limit is kind of, you can kind of tell just by the name, uh, it's that upper portion of dietary intake. So if you reach that upper limit and go beyond that upper limit, then basically what you're doing is you're putting your body at risk of having adverse effects. Of course, this is highly dependent on the nutrient that you look at. So for example, if you were to maybe look at calcium, for example, if you were to consume beyond that upper limit, overconsume calcium in that way, then it's possible you might suffer from constipation or kidney stones, things like that. Uh, of course, that would be completely different for like something like vitamin A or vitamin C, and and uh, it, it's highly dependent on the nutrient that you're talking about. So that being the case, it doesn't necessarily mean that if you go over on the upper limit of one nutrient that that necessarily applies to another nutrient. So each nutrient has its own upper limit and if you you can eat up to that upper limit and probably be fine. Uh, if you eat beyond that upper limit it is perfectly possible for you to be fine as well but it is considered that if you go beyond that upper limit, it is possible that you might have adverse effects. And of course, if you consume far above that upper limit on a consistent basis, usually it would be something like a consistent basis. If you do it once, it's probably not gonna be a huge deal. You're not gonna like kill yourself. <laughs> Your body is perfectly capable of regulating a lot of different things. Uh, but if you were to consume considerably more than the upper limit on a consistent basis, then it is perfectly possible your the probability of you having adverse effects increases due to that overconsumption, and your body's not necessarily able to regulate that overconsumption. So that's the upper limit. And I should quick mention that we have these dietary reference intakes, these reference points, uh, mainly because they're recommendations. They're, it's, it's not like you have to be obsessive to a point where, okay, I have to get a thousand, for example, a thousand milligrams of calcium every single day. And if I go over that by 50 milligrams or get under that by 100 milligrams on one day that your body's just going to go into shock and you're just going to die. <laughs> Things like that don't happen to a healthy population. 
um, you're, you're going to be perfectly fine if you over consume a little bit on one day, maybe under consume on another day. It's not a huge deal. They're just kind of reference markers so that you know. And if you get close to that, then you're probably good. You're probably on the right track. And if you're consistently under consuming the RDA or you're over consuming the RDA and getting close to that upper limit, maybe just kind of pull back a little bit. That's it. That's that's all they're trying to say. They're not trying to say that these numbers are an end all be all to your nutrition. Moving on. I uh, did a little bit of research just in case you're curious who determines these reference numbers. Uh, it is the Food and Nutrition Board of the Internal Medicine. So pretty much the government <laughs> determines these uh, these numbers. And I, as I've mentioned, the RDA is determined usually by a ton. It's determined by a lot of, of research, uh, observational, but mainly experimental research. And it's usually those nutrients have a lot of research backing them up, um, while other, like the acceptable intake, would have more focused on observational research because there isn't necessarily a whole bunch of research. Or if it isn't necessarily based on the observational research, there isn't enough to conclusively say one number is absolutely the correct number. And in that case, they just kind of make that educated guess based on kind of expert opinion and looking back through history. So those are the people that are in charge of your nutrition reference numbers. So are these references universal? The answer is a resounding no. references are not at all universal okay so if you're gonna be looking again I, I mentioned in the intro that these are of course dependent on the government that is serving you so if you live in the United States you're gonna have certain recommendations and if you live in the United Kingdom you might have different recommendations other parts of Europe it really depends on the country that you live in but these recommendations are typically relatively the same. I mean, they're not gonna be like a massive difference from country to country. But beyond that, so let's say we, we've got that all equated for, let's say we look inside the United States, it really depends on the population you're looking at. So you can't necessarily say that an RDA, calcium RDA is, I think, I believe it's a thousand milligrams, so we'll go with that. So. You can't say that a thousand milligrams is going to fulfill the needs of everybody in that population. So let's say we've got a population of 300 million people, that thousand milligrams is absolutely not going to cover everyone in that population, even by the RDA requirements of 98% uh, accuracy. Even in that case, you would need to have special, you have different populations. So you. It's, it's, you can't just look at the United States as one big population, you have to look at, it at different groups and you have to base those nutrients based on those different groups. And the reason why is because you have people like women that are pregnant, uh, you would have, I mean women in general compared to men uh, might need more of certain things, less of other things. Uh, age obviously plays a, a, a big role. Uh, spe specifically when you're younger, or maybe even if you're older, but specifically if you're younger, if you're growing, you're going to need more of certain things. It's The, the list goes on. I mean, it, the differences between humans, all we're able to do is just kind of group them into smaller groups and kind of individualize in that way. So an RDA is not an RDA for everyone. It's an RDA for a specific subgroup of the bigger population and you have to specifically look at individuation so if you are 17 years old for example you're still growing and you would you would need to go look at the dietary reference the RDA for maybe 16 to 17 year olds and let's say you're a girl 
you would need to look at girls 16 to 17 years old and look at your RDA for that. So you would not want to base it off of like a 35 year old male, for example. So are dietary references universal? Absolutely not. Okay. No. The answer is no. <laughs> All right. Let's move on. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And in summary, for those of you that do not want to watch the entire video, I've got you covered. So, we talked about how the RDA, the recommended daily allowance, is what you want to focus on. That is the most accurate way of figuring out your references. And again, of course, your references are highly dependent on the individual. So, if you're maybe 16 years old and you're a girl, you do not want to be using the same RDA that a 35-year-old male, for example, would be using. And nutrients, of course, all have different RDAs. So you can't look at calcium and apply that to iron, for example. You would have to continuously change based on the nutrient and your circumstances. So again, if you're pregnant, if you're growing, if you're older, if you're younger, I mean, your sex, everything changes your RDA. And we've got an RDA for you based on uh, different recommendations that are established by the Food and Nutrition Bureau in the internal medicine. So basically by the government or a different, a specific subsection of the government. So you're gonna to wanna to focus on your RDA, which is based on your estimated average requirement. And we also talked about acceptable intake. Acceptable intake is just basically if you can't find, if the government can't find enough research to back up a specific recommended daily allowance, an RDA, then in that case you would use an acceptable intake, which is an educated guess as to what range or what number would be appropriate for a population. And that's it. That's the video. That's all you need to know. That's all you might want to know. If you do want to know more, then of course please check out my article which is linked below and it will appear when the screen blacks out and you, there are more details and all my sources are listed in that article. And if you found the information extremely useful, then please, please, please subscribe because it absolutely motivates me. Every time, every week I gain one, two, three, however many subscribers in that week, it certainly motivates me to continue producing this quality content for you and for myself. So without further ado, I will catch you in the next video. Peace.